Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Finality Advanced plugin from Joey Sturgis. We're going to take a look at what the interface gives us, how it works with different instruments, and we're just going to give it a good overall test. So let's take a look at all that right now. So Finality is effectively a limiter. And you can get it in two different flavors. If you buy Finality Advanced, you also get that bundled with Finality Lite. Or you can buy Finality Lite on its own. Now, they both use exactly the same limiting engine. So it's the same software. The only real difference is that Finality Lite has a slightly cut down interface and gives you less control over what you're doing. Now, sometimes Finality Lite is going to be more than enough to work with the instrument or the track that you're working on. But obviously, Finality Advanced just gives you a little bit more control over what you're doing, some advanced functionality and so on. In this video, we're going to concentrate on using Finality Advanced, but just know that whatever you're kind of doing, you can get roughly the same kind of results with the Finality Lite as well. So let's take a look at how we can use this. Let's take a look at what's on the interface, and then let's take a look at it in action. Now, while Finality is a limiter, it is not a brick wall limiter. So you can't use this to completely stop audio from rising above a specified threshold. But what you can do is you can use this to tame aggressive transients and smooth everything out quite nicely. It really does work well with drums and with bass. It's, it's a pretty nice transparent uh, limiter that allows you, if you want to, to add some coloration or to have it slightly more aggressive if you're, you're trying to use it with drums. So we've got a couple of controls that you're going to be expecting to see. We've got the threshold control, which controls the amount of limiting that's being applied to it. Everything's set up in a dB, so you can see we can limit this right the way up to minus 30 dB. So there's quite a lot of threshold there to play with. Then we've got the output, which allows us to rebalance and control the amount of output that's actually exited the plugin. We've got the input, which allows us to control how much signal is coming in through the plugin. And what you'll tend to find is that the last sort of quarter of this uh, input dial is where you're going to get most of the control. Anything prior to that is really very, very subtle, and it's not really giving you a huge amount of input. So, you know, take your time with that. Make sure you set that up the way you want it just to make sure you get a maximum use of the signal that's coming in. We've got the option for gain makeup so we can ensure that we can balance the signal. And you can see we've got an auto gain option. So if you check that, it'll automatically apply the gain or you can disenable that or enable it. And then you can control that yourself by using the gain makeup knob. We've also got a high pass frequency and a side chain facility so we can control exactly what frequencies are being uh, affected. And you can monitor that by using the, uh, the side chain monitor so you can hear the frequencies that are going to be affected. So if you want to only want to concentrate on the higher frequencies, like for example with the drum kit, you may want to focus more on the snare or you may want to focus on the hi-hats or the ambient uh, microphones picking up the cymbals and things you can use this to cut out the effect being applied to the lower frequencies and the sidechain monitor really does give you the ability to to pick and choose exactly what it is that you you want to affect in that so that's a pretty nice little feature so next up we've got the look ahead facility which if we've got a track that has very fast transients in there this allows you to look ahead to that so you can cope with those so it can go from one millisecond right the way through up to five milliseconds which is another excellent feature You've also got the release option, which you can use to actually pick and choose how fast the signal is released. So if you've got something that has very, very fast beats, you can increase the release. You can have a very, very quick attack, or you can slow it down to smooth things out. We also have the option to control the wet and dry mix. So if your audio workstation doesn't allow you to do that, then you can use this to mix the original signal with the affected or limited signal coming through finality which again, like I say, is something that's quite useful if you want to get quite aggressive with the compression, uh, with the, the limiting, but you also want to let some of the original signal come through, you can use the mix control to control exactly how that works. We've also got a couple of switches on here. We've got the input and the output mode, so we can use the VU meter to see exactly what's being affected from the signal coming in to the signal going out. We can also control the actual way that the limiting is applied, whether it's being hard or soft limiting. So you can control exactly how that is, whether you want quite aggressive limiting or you want to sort of soften things out so it's it's a little bit smoother. You know, it depends upon the kind of instrument that you're using. You've also got the aggro and the color 
switches. Now, aggro is kind of geared towards if you're using drums, where, again, you've got fast transients, and the color will add a certain amount of saturation, and that's kind of controlled by the output uh, controller. So the, the less output, then the more coloration. So you get a slight kind of breakup on there, so you get a nice little color to it, but it never actually slips into being distorted. So it's a nice way. It works great with guitars. You can add a little bit of color to your drums if you want to. You know, it depends on the kind of instrument that you're working with. So that's the interface that we've got available to us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just load in and take a look at some drums and then we'll take a look at using it on some bass and we can see how we can control this and how we can actually just tweak and get a slightly better overall sound to the drum kit. Now you could break this down and go into each individual piece of the drum kit so you may want to have a different effect applied to your kick drum so you want your snare to your room mics but for this example I'm just going to keep it simple and we're going to use the overall drum sounds the entire mix of the drums and we'll do the same with the bass. So let's switch over now, let's take a look at this in action. So we're going to start this demo out by looking at some drum tracks. Now these are not live drums, these have all been done using Easy Drummer 2. So they're already well processed, but you can still get an extra little bit out of using Finality to smooth things out. You know, where you've got the transients and things in there and you've adjusted the velocity and stuff like that, you can control and smooth that out to give you a nice natural sounding drum sound where you've applied some of this, this limiting to it. Okay, so let's start off with just the drum track and then we'll take a look at introducing some of the different settings and I'll go through the different controls like the threshold, the output, we'll add in some aggro, some colour and we'll tweak some other things on there and then we'll A, B and C the differences between the two. Now they'll be subtle but they will be there. So hopefully what you could see with that, where we've gone through the different options, is that the aggro and the colour add some nice subtleties to that. You know, a slight coloration, like slight saturation to your drums, just give them an extra little bit of breakup, but not actually veering into into distortion. So you can really push the drums quite nicely. You can control through the high pass filter exactly what uh, side chaining is, is taking effect. So you can effectively control whether the low frequencies have been affected or just the high and mid frequencies. You know, you can get quite selective with that. So I kind of like it on the drums. It does add that nice little bit of saturation. 
careful not to go too far with a threshold in this instance because I tend to find it starts to then break up a little bit and I'm not really too happy with the sound of that but that's really just with this particular drum kit and the way it's all set up on there you know really does add something to the drums it's really nice so now let's take a look at this on we'll do an a b test on it before and after so you can see and hopefully you can hear with the audio on this this youtube video you can hear the differences in there but they are like i say they're quite subtle but that coloration and saturation is there should you know to listen to listen out for it So pretty nice. I like it on the drums. It really does add something extra to it. So let's just disable that and let's just go down to the bass guitar and let's have a little listen how we can use that with a more dynamic instrument in this example where we've got the bass is not being smoothed out. So we'll use finality on this now and we'll take a little listen to see what that actually sounds like and what it does with the bass. Okay, so next up, let's try this on a bass track. Now I've got two duplicate bass tracks. This is not two separate recordings. This is exactly the same recording and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to the master bus so we can apply it to both of the tracks simultaneously. So let's just come in and quickly add that in. So we'll add in the finality. And let's go listen to it. We'll A, B it. We'll take a listen to before and we'll take a listen to it afterwards so you can see what we're doing to the track. So let's just close that down a second. And let's take a listen to just the bass track now so we can hear exactly what we're working with. So what we've got is we've got one bass that's being affected slightly, so it's a, a fairly clean sound. We've also got a very, very overdriven sound, but we've also got quite a lot of dynamic range in there, as you can see from the waveform. So if we just open up Finality now on the master track, let's just enable that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through now and I'm going to tweak this to where I would put it. I'm not going to worry about the high pass frequency because we're dealing with a bass, so there's really no high frequencies to deal with in this particular track. So that's completely, um, we'll leave that out completely. And let's just go through and let's just see what we can end up with. We're just a very, very quick tweak to this, just to give it a little bit more, uh, for want of a better term, a little bit more spank to the actual bass itself, give it a bit more click, a bit more attack. So let's just take a listen to how we can do that with Finality Advanced.
Well, there we go. That's it on the bass. Now, for me, I've got to be honest, I really like what it's doing to the bass guitar. It's adding an extra little bit of low end in there. It's giving the guitar just a little bit more spark, a little bit more spank. And it just really brings the bass to life and allows it to sit and glue into the mix just that little bit better. Now, remember, I've got no EQ, compression or anything on there. This is just simply easy mix, creating the bass tones from a DI signal and then finality being applied to the, the actual bass bus. So what do I think of Finality Advanced? Well, I really like what Finality Advanced is doing to my bass tones and my drum tones. I like the coloration, the slight saturation that's added in there. I like the aggro option. I like the fact that it's quite a transparent limiter. It doesn't kill the signal frequency. It really does enhance it. It allows me to get some extra punch in there, smooth things out quite nicely. The high pass filter is quite nice as well if I want to control exactly what's being affected by the limiter. It's a great option in there. So to sum up, I definitely say it's worth checking out. For the amount of money that they're asking for this, it really is a brilliant piece of software. The fact that you get the light version with it is an added bonus. Download the demo, try it out for yourself, see how it sits in the mix, see how it affects the signals and the type of recording that you do. Don't just think you're limited to only working with sort of metal guitars and metal drums and things like that. I think it's really going to help you control and tame frequencies and, and things on any kind of recording where you've got dynamic instruments being used like bass and drums. So check it out, download the demo, see what you think of it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all of the new content that we add on a weekly basis. If you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. We read everything you post and we try to answer every question you ask. Well, until next time, happy mixing.